Welcome back to My Cool Inventions Network. This segment's called Selling Secrets. This is the secrets we try to educate you on and how to get uh, different things to learn different things about your innovation, invention, entrepreneurism. And we've declared this officially Canadian Invention Day. <laughs> we have our coffee crisp right here. Anybody know what a coffee crisp is? If you're not a Canadian, you have no idea what a coffee crisp is. <laughs> this is deliciousness right here. This beautiful candy chocolate bar right here. Coffee crisp. Right. Canadian invention. What are the Canadian inventions that we got here? We're really surprised here. We well, we were, let's go through because, some you know, food ones. Uh, we had canola oil. Canola oil. Everybody That's in the store has got canola oil. Canadian, right? Okay. And then we had the Macintosh red apple. Macintosh red apple. A little sure genetic engineering there. A little genetic engineering for apples. What you, else we got? Uh, instant mashed potatoes. In, well, who, who needs that? All right. Next anyway, one. <laughs> Canada dry ginger ale. Ah, you of see. Course. Canada dry ginger ale. The That's, Nanamo bar. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, uh, Tony, do you know what a Nanamo bar is a what and the Nanaimo bar in Nanaimo bar the Nanaimo invented in Nanaimo British Columbia I know what it is the night well I hope you do it's the most delicious <laughs> yeah. dessert you've ever had in your whole life yes a, uh, chocolate. Butter, a butter tart oh do you know what a butter tart is it's a tart it's a buttery tart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, no. it isn't. On there. It's you like a pecan up. pie without the pecans. That's exactly right. It's like a pecan little tart without the pecans. With no pecans in it. Yeah. Well, down so, here in the South, we eat pecans. Yeah, in the South, we well, eat pecans. We, yeah. Well, there's a little Canadian inventionism <laughs> yeah, yeah. out there. And if you're watching the show and you have any Canadian inventions, just type them in there. Yeah. All right, we should go back to our selling secrets. We oh, got yeah, off sorry. a tangent on the whole <laughs> Canadian invention deal. because And Alexander Graham Bell, you know, the phone. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of a big Yukon deal. Yukon gold potatoes. Yukon gold potatoes. As a, notice has a lot of food. Yeah, well, I just so started cold. on the food stuff. It's so so cold in Canada. We do a lot of food. Actually, uh, uh, Banting and Best. You know what they invented? Tony Banting and Best. Doctor Banting, Doctor Best. No. Uh, you actually studied University of Toronto. Insulin, baby. In, there's another one. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah stuff yeah. like that. Bombardier. No. Bombardier. What did, he, what, did he, what did Bombardier invent? Was he it, wouldn't know. He wouldn't know. Was this. it the first antibiotic? No, no. no. Snowmobiles. Snowmobiles. snowmobiles, snowmobiles, okay. yeah, snowmobiles. And now snow jet skis. You know those things. Those that's a Canadian invention. Uh, for start off on snow, and then when the snow melted, they went, "Hey, maybe we should do this on the water too." I've um, heard of the snow you speak of. <laughs> yes, of it's really. Snow? Yeah. yeah. So we got all kinds of Canadian inventions, and we challenge anybody watching if you can come up with a Canadian invention, just type it in there, on there. So let's go back to the selling secrets. So what we're right. going to talk about today, and the selling secrets are. So a lot of people have this logistics, okay? How do we get your product from the factory, manufacturing to your warehouse to retail? Let me tell you something, that's a real lesson for you. Um, if you are manufacturing or you're selling something to retail, all right? So you gotta understand that there's different retailers out there. This, I really got caught up in this. We were selling Stains Are Out, no. one of our uh, very famous inventions made from banana oil, stain remover. And uh, we got all excited because we were running an infomercial and pe retailers were starting to pick up the product, so we started to sell them to retail. Right. So, first retailer to get on board was a little, little chain of drugs, drug stores down here called CVS. We loved them. They brought a truck, they picked the stuff up, we sent it to a distribution center, and then they took it from there. So all I had to do was get it from our warehouse to their DC, they call it, distribution center. Yep. And that's the last I saw of it. Everything got, everybody got straightened out. So I got all excited. Didn't cost me too much to sell and send several tens of thousands of bottles to a distribution center. And then from there, it got onto the store shelves. Right. The trouble was, along came Home Depot. And they said, hey, we'll take that too. And we said, hey, Home Depot, what a great idea. So, so I said, okay, okay. <laughs> so I forgot when I was pricing my product, I forgot to take the logistics into consideration. Yep. You see, Home Depot is different from CVS. CVS has their distribution centers. Home Depot doesn't have a distribution center. Every store is a distribution, distribution center. center. Yeah. So they buy 12 bottles in a case. And they say, okay, we'll take two of those cases. And every time we need it, we'll just buy two more cases. And I said, wait a minute. I sell those things for like six bucks a piece. 12 times $6 is $72. The whole value of the order was $72. But you know, they had a lot of stores. Ship it there. Yeah, we had to get it to the store. <laughs> oh, and that's no. a problem. We had to get it by UPS. And actually the UPS charge for the case of Sains are out. <laughs> I mean, ate into the profit faster than you can whistle Dixie. In fact, in some cases, in some of the stores, like mm -hmm. wherever there wasn't the furthest away from us, actually cost more to get the case of the product to their store the than profit. the product was actually being sold for. So. so logistics is kind of important, everybody out there. So before you go pricing stuff out, 
and you get all excited. Like we had that Canadian guy with the leaf hog here. He wants to get into Home Depot stores. Ah, before you price that stuff out, <laughs> you got to take the logistics into consideration. Now, a lot of times, you know, we have to they make prices on the fly. Because, you know, it's a very competitive world out there, and buyers, when they get interested, they want to know the price right away. And it takes time, for example, especially when you're shipping from China, to take the logistics into consideration. How much is it going to cost to get it from a Chinese factory into a U.S. distribution center? Right. All right, so, you know, unless you're starting to do the weights and the dims and the measurements and how many containers it fits in and what's the cost of the container... So we used to use, and here's another thing, I, I, I give you the first tip, but then I'll tell you the downfall of the tip. The tip was, we used to build in what we call the freight factor, okay? So we use our freight factor for a lot of the smaller things is 8%, okay? okay. So every time we get the wholesale cost, we factor in 8% for just the, the money it costs to get it from the factory to us. Now, we got into trouble on that because recently we were selling to Evine Ottomans, and they're big, right? And the Ottoman freight factor, listen to this, wasn't 8%, it's 22%. Wow. We said, whoa, hold on for a second. Now I lost money on that deal wow. because I can't absorb 14, 50, 14 extra percent because you know, my margins aren't that big. So I immediately lost money on those Ottomans. So I don't want you guys to fall into that, 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 that pitfall. So make sure you understand freight. Right, logistics, shipping costs. Um, another thing we have to do is um, when you're doing shipping from, especially China. I'll give you another tip. Um, it costs more money to ship it inside the United States than it costs to ship it from China to a port. Right. Wow. So many times we're under the gun for time because everything's last minute, especially in our world with with the logistics turning over so much. In fact, Walmart and these guys have such just in time logistics that timing is everything. Gone is the day where you fill up a warehouse and you sell it to Walmart whenever you feel like it, whenever they want it. You got to do just in time logistics. They invented basically the system for that. So what happens is because it's just in time is do logistics. You try to cut down the time, and the quickest way to cut down the time is to take a, a ship from China to California, because you can ship that in two weeks. Whereas a ship that goes from China to New York or Miami can take five, six weeks to ship, okay? Mm -hmm. So suddenly you lost four weeks in, sh four weeks in shipping time, right. but it's way cheaper to do it that way than the just-in-time logistics. So just-in-time logistics has put a lot of pressure on the price. So, you know, I don't know how Walmart does it. They're, they're, those guys are trying to... Um, save money with just-in-time logistics. But I think, in my opinion, what's happened, they've just taken that money and they've pushed it onto the guys who are shipping. So they need it just-in-time, but all the margins and the speed is basically pushed back to guys like you and me who are trying to sell to them. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep that in consideration, too. So that's a little lesson there, that just-in-time can actually mean lower profit margin for you, higher profit margin for them. Very smart on their part, but what they're basically trying to do is they're trying to make sure you pay the freight costs on the land, which, by the way, can cost you a small fortune. So much more money than just shipping into the ports of entry where you want it to. They ship into the ports of entry, they feel like it, because when they buy their own products directly, but the guys like you and me, that gets pushed off to us in many cases. So just my opinion there. But you got to take that into consideration when you're pricing. So You also got to consider that what you're selling, because, for example, you sell a liquid. Yep. Now, if you're shipping liquid, even if it's a bottle of water, which might cost you so much money, but you're shipping liquid. Like one one liter, for example, I'm Canadian. If it's one liter, it's, I know it's one kilogram, and that is heavyweight heavy weight to be shipping just like that. So you got to consider that, too. So if you have a cleaning product or you have some kind of right. beverage, you got to be careful what you're doing. If you're bottling in glass, you got to be careful because the glass is heavy. So you Great used to be, bottler. You used to be involved in the bottling, the glass bottling in business, juice, right? And juice, yeah. In juice and the best, best thing to bottle in is glass, but the, the disadvantage is that you're shipping this heavy weight of stuff if you're shipping it around around this, around uh, the country. Something I never understood, Andrew. I mean, plastic's a big problem. They've got this big, huge plastic size, the size of Texas floating around the Pacific Ocean. Apparently now there's two or three of those things floating around. <clears throat> Eventually our oceans would just be plastic. Um, no. Why not glass? Glass is sand. Like, the, the, we'll talk about recyclable. Talk about uh, biodegradable. Talk about sustainable. Yep. There's lots of sand around. So why aren't we shipping in, in glass? Why are we shipping in, it's in too plastic? Heavy. 
It's just too so it's heavy. just the weight. So people question. are looking at the weight, and the cost costs a lot more money. Because when I was a kid growing up, I don't know if you guys watch and remember this. When I was a kid growing up, what did we do? Milk we man. used to have uh, the milkman. We used to bring the glass bottles to the front door. We put the glass. And bottle. we used to have like you know bought our Coke or something. It was in a glass bottle, yeah. and there was a notch on the bottom. We used to know that every time they used the glass bottle, they notched it when they reused it, and uh, they I think it was seven times. After seven times, they, they they'd actually then destroy the glass and start just again. Make it again. Yeah. Just make it again. So. Oh, so weight, and so Andrew's pitch thing is about weight is also yeah. important, too, because weight is also affects your delivery costs. So it's actually a complicated thing. I guess that's why there's logistics experts out there who take things like weight in consideration, locations in consideration, what retailer you're dealing with, right. uh, whether you have to ship into their stores or not, or you can do their DCs, your distribution centers. I also wonder about Amazon. I mean, they they got so many huge DCs running up. <laughs> so I guess their answer is to have distribution centers a lot of places everywhere, because I think what they're trying to do their edges they're trying to ship it to the customer within the day or one day so yeah, they're fast. trying to make it and the only way you can do that is if you've got your storage facilities right next to your customer which in a big country like the United States that's not easy to do but they're they're, they're, they're starting to solve that problem so a few selling secrets kind of a, we want to install some of our knowledge onto you all the sort of, sort of the pitfalls when it comes to logistics sometimes it's the re, re, it's the retailer do they have distribution centers they have to send it to the store directly sometimes yep. it's a location of where you're shipping it from China. I mean, do you bring it into California or to the port closest to the distribution center? That's a consideration. Andrew brought up a great point. Sometimes it's weight, like glass bottles. I don't understand. I would pull back to glass bottles, seriously, you know? It'd be great, but it's not always feasible. I think the world's going to go back there. Sustainable, wonderful glass Hope bottles. So. Hope so. Why are they making me uh, buy plastic bags at the store? Seriously, why don't you just give it to me in a glass bottle? Maple syrup comes in glass bottles. Maple syrup <laughs> comes in glass bottles. I wonder why. We'll figure that out on another selling secret. I suppose. That's a good point. Why does it come in glass bottles? You've been listening to the My Cool Inventions Network. Who knows? Submit your product, learn, get selling.